to Mexico City. We'll be there for Thursday. I'm attending meeting with President N, meaning President Nieto, uh, with Dad. Highlighted is, are the comments. We've been talking about business deals and part partnerships for seven years. I've brought every single person you've ever asked me to bring to the effing White House and the Vice President's House and the inauguration. I've delivered on every single thing you've ever asked. In this email, Hunter Biden acknowledges his attendance at a meeting between Mexican President Nieto and then Vice President Biden. Discusses business deals and partnerships with a wealthy and politically connected Mexican family. References access provided to Mexican businessmen at the White House and Vice President's House. And states he had already delivered on every single thing you've ever asked. Did this email or does this email raise concerns that Hunter Biden might have acted contrary to Farah since it appears he never registered to, to represent foreign principles? So I'm not familiar with the, the email that you're referring to. What I can tell you is that uh, it is a fundamental principle of the Justice Department and consistent with my almost 20 year career that we follow the facts and the law in every case without so you're not familiar with, but you're not familiar with this ideology. Right? You're not familiar with this, uh, this email here. I'm, I'm we not. have next up, we're gonna show you a picture of Vice President Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, Miguel Alamán, his father, and Carlos Slim, one of the richest men in the world, in 2015, while Joe Biden was vice president. This picture seems to conflict with President Biden's statement that he has never met with his son's business associates. Much of the information regarding Hunter Biden's foreign business dealings has come from the laptop that was abandoned by Hunter Biden and labeled by the media's misinformation, as well as by 51 former intelligence officers. Uh, in a weird letter dated October 19, 2020, which I will submit for the record. This week, we learned FBI whistleblowers have come forward and reported the FBI committed a widespread effort within the FBI to downplay or discredit negative information about Hunter Biden. Are you familiar with that reporting? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, has any investigation of Hunter Biden by your office been influenced by the work produ product or actions taken by FBI agent Timothy Thiebel? So, I'm not going to comment on any uh, investigation that may or may not be ongoing. What I can assure you is that we follow the facts and evidence and we apply the law and the principles of federal prosecution in every single case without regard to ideology or politics. So, so you are unaware, because you're unaware of the reporting, so you're unaware of any efforts within the Department of Justice to label derogatory information on Hunter Biden as disinformation? I'm not going to comment on any uh, potential ongoing investigation. Okay. According to reports, Border Patrol has apprehended at least 50 illegal aliens at the southwest border in fiscal year 22, 2022 in the Office of Field Operations and has encountered at least 50 aliens on a terror watch list at ports of entry in the fiscal year. Does CBP consult with National Security Division when they encounter an illegal alien who's, who's on a terrorist watch list? So, so the National Security Division was actually created to work with other agencies, whether that's do, agencies do they, in the intelligence they, community or agencies the CBP, across the government, uh, including, including agencies in okay, the Okay, so this is a yes security. or no. This is not hard. Does CBP give you information when they find someone who's on the terrorist watch list, when they encounter them at the border? They, do they give that information to you? I, I, I can't speak as I sit here to any particular situation or, or circumstance. What I can tell you is that the, the whole you, you point can, of... You, I'm not asking about the circumstances. Is the process is that they report to you? So you have a hundred known encounters of people on a terrorist watch list. I assume one would think it's coming to you. I'm asking about the process, not a specific case. So, in general, Congressman, the, the way the situate the system works is that the FBI investigates the crimes okay. that we prosecute. So here we go. Let's, so let's get it to may the well be that case. that information goes between let's get to the specific CBP case, and the FBI. But I'll I don't have my time. specific information. Are you about familiar that? with the name Isambazi? I'm sorry? Are you familiar with the name Issam Bazi? No. Okay, he's a Lebanese-born Venezuelan national listed on the FBI's terror watch list uh, who was released into the United States after crossing the border illegally. According to reports, the FBI recommended keeping him in custody, but ICE headquarters intervened and released him because of a concern that he might catch COVID-19 because he was overweight. So far, there's been more than 500,000 known Godaways into the country illegally. How many can you extrapolate are on the terrorist watch list? And have you done any assessment uh, as according to the national security risk? The uh, time of the gentleman has expired. The witness may answer the question. I'm not familiar with that, no. Uh, Ms. Lofgren. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I'd like to explore uh, Section 702 uh, with you. As I'm sure you're aware, in his November 20, 
20 recertification, FISA court judge uh, Bozberg found that the FBI employees had improperly searched Americans' emails that were collected without a warrant and were unrelated to foreign intelligence information. And then at the ODNI annual statistical transparency report released in April of 2022 found that the FBI searched its 702 surveillance repository, quote, using the identifiers of Americans, like their names, phone numbers, and addresses, nearly 3.4 million times between December 2020 and November 2021. This is nearly triple the number reported from 2020. Uh, although the ODNI only reported 376 warrants issued for wiretaps or physical searches of individuals in 2021, it found two, 232,000 plus named targets of FISA Section 702 warrantless searches. Now, what, during your confirmation hearing before the Senate Intelligence Committee, you told the senators that restoring and maintaining trust in the FISA process was a critical priority for you, and I was glad to hear that. Since you uh, have assumed your role as Assistant Attorney General, what have you done to prevent uh, warrantless improper backdoor searches of Americans' data conducted under Section 702. Thank you, Congressman, for the opportunity to talk about uh, FISA, in particular Section 702. Um, as you noted, when I was confirmed uh, last year, I indicated that a priority for the Department of Justice and for me at the National Security Division was to ensure that Congress uh, and the American people have confidence in uh, our use of intelligence tools such as FISA. FISA has, was passed first in 1978. As you know, it has proven to be an indispensable tool uh, to go after spies and terrorists and hackers, and it remains so. And in fact, Section 702, part of FISA, was designed to collect information about non-U.S. persons, non-U.S. citizens, uh, and persons who are outside the United States. Um, and it has proven to be essential to protecting our national security since it was first passed in 2008. The issues that you cite are ones that are of concern. Um, the compliance of the FBI in particular with the way in which it searches through the Section 702, 702 data that is lawfully collected. Uh, the FBI, with the Department of Justice, has undertaken a series of steps over the past year to improve compliance uh, by, uh, through a system of systems changes and trainings. Uh, and I have been part of that effort, to, to answer your question directly, uh, in my eight months in office. Um, we are looking forward to improving the compliance record of the Department of, uh, Department of Justice and the FBI when it comes to Section 702, but I can assure you that it remains a priority and it is part of the broader, really comprehensive system of oversight that, that takes place when it comes to foreign intelligence collection that includes Congress, the executive branch, and the judiciary. Well, if I may just follow up, we have had um, reassurances over the years and yet the performance continues to be poor and it's been poor under both Democratic and Republican administrations. So the, we have considered imposing a warrant requirement uh, for queries of uh, known Americans. And uh, I guess I'm thinking that that is a, probably a necessity unless we can get some further definitive um, control of the warrantless search of Americans uh, using the 702 database. This is a misuse. I, I, we agree. I mean, we want to catch the spies and the foreign bad actors, but to use that database uh, for warrantless searches of Americans is simply improper, and yet it continues. How can we get assurances, and when will we get our next report from you about the controls that you've discussed? To, as, as you know, Section 702 expires at the end of next year. We are engaged in a concerted effort to, to be prepared to brief Congress at any time, brief you, your staff, um, about the controls that are in place. I, I the, the way that Section 702 works, if I may, it is information collected targeting non-U.S. persons overseas. Um, it is lawfully collected. What the FBI is then able to do is to search that data to find connections. So it's not a warrantless search of Americans. It is a search of data that was collected targeting people who are outside the United States who are not U.S. citizens. 
but I, if but I may, no, that, that, if I may, sir, that is contrary to the report that we got from ODNI and from the FISA court. So uh, I think my time has expired, the, but we need yes. to get to the bottom of this. And uh, Colorado, gentlewoman from Colorado is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Insanity is doing the same thing repeatedly and expecting a different result. That makes the supporters of this legislation, by definition, insane. Reckless spending in this town is what causes inflation. And we cannot continue to increase taxes on the American people and put a target on American energy production while spending a historic $370 billion on Green New Deal initiatives and expect to lower inflation and improve our economy. Remember that so-called bipartisan infrastructure bill? Yeah, we spent $200 billion on Green New Deal initiatives. I guess that was just a down payment on this never-ending theft of American tax dollars. We are sacrificing, you are sacrificing American families at the altar of climate change. Mr. Speaker, isn't it so? Joe Biden himself said inflation rate is at zero percent. So what the heck are we doing here? Why are we passing this so-called Inflation Reduction Act if it's at zero percent? Well, in fact, it's the Inflation Enhancement Act. Gentlewoman's time has expired. And it does the exact opposite of what Americans need right now. This is just another con game by the Democrats calling something one thing and saying time another. Has expired. This is making the IRS with time agents has expired. larger than the Pentagon, the State the woman, Department. Gentlemen is no one. longer recognized. The gentleman from Missouri reserves the bet. Mr. Speaker, how much time do you need? The gentlewoman is no longer recognized. Her time has expired. The gentleman from Missouri reserves. I will yield an additional 30 seconds to the gentlelady from Colorado to finish General her woman, comment. The gentleman is recognized for an additional 30 seconds. This bill hires 87,000 new IRS agents, and they are armed, and the job description tells them that they need to be required to carry a firearm and expect to use deadly force if necessary. Excessive taxation is theft, and the chairman said that we are using the power of the federal government in this bill. You're darn right you are. You're using the power of the federal government for armed robbery on the taxpayers. I can only see why that this was rushed through committee and put on the floor. Gentlewoman's time has expired. Somewhere Gentlewoman's time has expired. Bill. She is no longer recognized. The gentleman from Missouri reserves. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized.